Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane. This video is part of my hardware guide series, and today we're going to be talking about the original Xbox. So it was November 15, 2001, and back then I worked at a video game store, and the original Xbox came out, and I got one. I got one so early that a local news outlet came out to the store that I worked at and came and look at, looked at it, got some footage of me playing and asked me a couple of questions and stuff. And uh, back then I was, oof, I was a kid and I gave what I thought was a pretty good review where it was just basically, uh, I, I told them that it doesn't matter what the system has under the hood, it's doesn't have games that people want to play. And honestly, the Xbox, the original Xbox, uh, definitely had things that people wanted to play back then. Uh, be it Halo, Dead or Alive, or any of the other hundreds of games that were released on this system. Uh, but right now we're just going to go over some of the hardware stuff that I know about this. Um, originally, this system was released with multiple versions. I mean, they, they went through, um, I, I can't even remember how many hardware revisions they went through. It was essentially a computer, um, and it, it had the same architecture, uh, for the most part. Um, it used IDE cables, it used, you know, things that I would normally recognize and associate with a computer back in 2001. So... It had multiple revisions. One of the big things that you could tell between the revisions of the systems was the optical drive trays. Uh, there were multiple versions of what the optical drives were, that were used. There was Thompson, Philips, Samsung, and Hitachi. And everyone had their opinion on what was the best. I want to say a lot of people have basically settled on Thompson being the best, but I could be wrong. Um, let me know in the comments below which optical drive for the original Xbox you think is the best. And, um, you know, so there's the optical drive uh, with all of that stuff. The IDE uh, H HDD, or hard disk drive, um, these are locked hard drives. Basically what that means is that you can't just drop in any IDE drive. Um, actually easier to do a mod where you, it's called the TSOP flash mod. Um, Mr. Mario actually does a really good job of uh, showing people what that is. Um, and it's basically just custom firmware to unlock a bunch of the things that the Xbox, the original Xbox, can accomplish once you uh, unlock it like that. And the problem with these old IDE drives is they're going to fail eventually. So if you're buying an original Xbox, um, get ready to replace that IDE drive. Get ready to mod the system, not to pirate, but at least for longevity service uh, purposes. Uh, speaking of longevity stuff, the clock capacitor in every version of every Xbox, original Xbox that I know of. The clock capacitor is very big, and it leaks a lot. And when I say it leaks a lot, I mean it leaks enough of the corrosive fluid onto the main board of the system to where it will cut traces and cause issues, and eventually make it where the original Xbox doesn't turn on anymore. And I'm not the best person to do to do repairs on electronics or anything like that, but I know that repairing traces on a on any kind of circuit board is a huge pain. Which is why if you get one of these things, if you're going out looking for one of these and and stuff, and you get it home, take it apart. Get rid of the capacitor. It's annoying that you have to reset the clock every time you turn the system back on, but the, at least the system turns back on. I've actually gone through with console five and 
bought more of the or some updated better versions of that clock capacitor and reinstalled the clock capacitor on mine. Um, it's not a hard mod. You just have to go through and take the whole thing apart and take it completely out of the shell, flip it over and solder in the new new capacitors. But you know, to each their own. So let's get on to the next thing is the controllers. There are two main controllers for the original Xbox that are licensed. Um, you can find all kinds of unlicensed ones. Um, the best unlicensed wireless one that I can think of is the Logitech one that looks suspiciously a lot like a PlayStation 2 controller. Um, but let's get back to the two main ones. If you're buying an Xbox, or original Xbox, you want to have some controllers. Uh, there's the big Duke controller. And when I say big, I mean, it is, it is big. Um, I mean, like, and I have big hands and stuff, so it fits in my hands fairly well, but uh, it did not go over well with a lot of people. And then there's the secondary controller. Um, originally, this it's called the S-Type controller, and originally it was made for Japan because um, they have smaller hands. Uh, there's, uh, I mean, I'm not trying to be insulting or anything, but um, I'm, I'm guessing that's exactly why it was created. But, the S-Type controller was more efficient. Um, it was, it fit better even in uh, in my hands, and and I just uh, if if you get a uh, a system, try to get some S S-Type controllers. Um, now a lot of them have breakaway dongles and. You have to make sure that it's actually going to match the ports on the front of the system. Um, it's a big, uh, big flat style of connection. It's not perfectly round, um, but you know, some people like the Duke controllers. Some people don't like the Duke controllers. Some people like the S-type controllers. Uh, and you know, again, it's up to pref you know personal preference on what you like. I do know that a lot of people like modifying the Duke controller and because that it's larger and you can get away with a lot more mods inside of a Duke controller. Now, on to light guns. Now, there were not that many light gun games for the original Xbox. Um, I think there was a House of the Dead game and that there was some sort of uh, silent scope game. And for the most part, that was it. Um, I mean, if I'm forgetting one, you know, guys, let me know down in the comments below. But those are the only two that come to mind. And I don't even think there was an official light gun made by Microsoft for the original Xbox. Now, there's a couple of different ones. There's some that look like you know, large sniper rifles and stuff, or carbines. There, and there's some that look like, you know, miniature machine guns, and there's some that just look like plain old pistols. And for the most part that I've seen, none of them are official. None of them have any kind of Xbox uh, official branding on them. And let's get on to the last part, how to hook the system up. It's your basic figure eight style plug. You know, it's nothing too fancy. Uh, I think you can even walk into Walmart and buy one of these for like five or eight bucks today. Um, it's the same plug that you can plug into the back of a Dreamcast, into the back of an original PlayStation, the back of a PlayStation 2. You know, this, this figure eight plug fits a lot of different consoles. But, you know, so if it doesn't come with a, with a power plug, it's not the end of the world. Now, that said, there's the video connector. That is proprietary. You can modify a system to work without it by soldering to the pins, but that's not easy. A lot easier just to go with one of the three options for video cable. There's the basic composite. Then there's the upgraded one, which is S-Video. Now, the official Microsoft one came as this weird-looking box that everything plugged into, but it also had 
uh, Auslink out, which is the uh, optical cable for surround sound. Then there's the really advanced one, which I was thankful that I've got both of these kits, uh, which is a component out, and it is a great picture. The official Xbox component out box is really, really nice. And it's my preferred way to play and my preferred way to capture game footage on the original Xbox. But if you follow my guide and you just take a look at all of these things and realize that there are going to be problems with the original Xbox and that you definitely want to get your hands on some S controllers or if you have really big hands, maybe a Duke controller will do for you. And that the power cable is not that big of a deal, but definitely want to make sure that you get your hands on some video cables. You'll have a good experience with the original Xbox. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month, and look forward to sharing with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.